Hey everyone, my name is Foss, and today I'm gonna to go over how to set up your PlayStation 4 controller for use with the Project 64 emulator. This is a video I did about a year ago, but there are some things that have changed since, well, now and then. So I'm gonna go over how to set this up from start to finish, and this includes actually connecting your PS4 controller to your PC. So let's get started with that, and just know that you will need a PC with Bluetooth capabilities, and if not, you'll have to buy yourself a Bluetooth adapter, which is relatively cheap. I'd recommend one that has like USB 3.0 compatibility because this can give you some pretty good response time with your controllers. But with that, let's get into actually setting this up and connecting our controller. So let's head, head on over to our home screen here. From there, just click on start on the bottom left, then go to your settings. And let's go up to the devices tab here. From here, if you do not have this option up here that says add Bluetooth or other device, then your computer doesn't have Bluetooth capabilities. Again, at this point, you can just buy yourself a USB adapter for this, which is why I have to do with mine, and it works pretty dang well. But let's actually add this. So if I click on add Bluetooth device, I'll just choose Bluetooth right here. And now we need to make this actually searchable. To do that, you'll have to hit the PlayStation button right there, along with the share button at the same time. So if you hold those both down, it'll eventually start to flash here. You can see it's flashing. At that point, it's gonna show up here as a wireless controller. I have another one over here that's trying to connect as well, it looks like. But I'll just click on wireless controller. The device is ready to go. If you've never connected a controller to your computer before, it might try to download a driver or two, which is just fine. Let it download it. Make sure that it downloads it or else you're not gonna be able to use this probably. But from there, I'm just gonna hit done. And now you can see the wireless controller is actually connected to the computer. You can see the light is on, but now we actually need this thing to work a little bit better with the computer. And to do that, I recommend a program that's called DS4 Windows. So let's actually head on over into our browser to actually download DS4 Windows. So from there, let's go into our browser of choice. I like to use Google Chrome myself, but whatever browser works for you works for you, I guess. So let's download the DS4 Windows application itself. You can follow the link in the description below to get to the right website. Otherwise, you can just type in DS4 Windows into your search bar, and it should pull you up to this screen right here. And I'm gonna choose the second option here, which is actually a new website since I last did this video. And it's gonna look something like this. This is the DS4 Windows website. And we do the little download here on the top right. And it's gonna give you a little add. Do not hit continue. Do not do any of that stuff. Just close out of it. Okay, I'll bring you to this next screen here. Again, do not hit download up here. Scroll down and choose this download option right here. When you hit that and you give it a few seconds, it's gonna actually pull up something like a zip folder with all the information we need. There it is down there. Don't need to fill this in, anything like that. Trust me, you'll get plenty of updates every time you start up the application. So if I close out of this here. Okay, so now that we have the download, we head back into our folders here. If we go under our downloads folder, you should be able to see this DS4 Windows zipped file. You should already have a program on your computer that can open up zip files. If not, just do a quick Google search. You should be able to find something pretty easily. But all you have to do is right click on this, hit extract all. I'm gonna choose a place that I won't lose this. I like to keep all my stuff pretty organized. So I'm gonna keep it under my documents folder under application data. And I'll have to add a new folder here for DS4 Windows. So if I just hit new folder, type in DS for Windows, enter, open up into that one, hit select folder, and now I can extract it into there. So this is gonna make a new folder called DS4 Windows. This can have all the information I need. Everything else that's in here in the download section, I can just get rid of because I don't need it anymore. If I click into my documents under my application data, you'll see I have this DS4 Windows folder here now. And let's just open that up here. So open that, open up the DS4 Windows application. If you want this to be on your main screen, you just right click it and we'll click on it, then right click it. And now we can actually add this. So I wanna just pin it to my taskbar so that way it's down here, ready to go. Otherwise, if I wanna just make a shortcut, you can easily make a shortcut as well by just clicking create shortcut, whatever works for you. So there's that. If I open this up here, it's gonna bring up the DS4 Windows application. And you can see here right away, my controller actually connected to the DS4 Windows app because it's already connected to my computer. You can see here, I have a purple light on. 
And if I want to just customize it, make sure this is actually connected, I could choose a custom color and just move it up and down. You should see the colors actually changing as it goes along. So you can choose whatever color works best for you. It's kind of a cool little option you can do there. You can see here that I've already used DS4 Windows before, so I already have a selected profile set up, but yours should just say default. I'll show you actually how to set up different profiles right now. So if you go under profiles, you can click new, and it's going to give you this one that says, do you want to use a profile editor? <coughs> I'm just going to hit yes. So if I hit yes, it gives you the option to do different presets. I like to just stick with the regular gamepad, and they can choose between Xbox 360 and DualShock 4. For the N64 emulators, I like to just stick with the Xbox 360 just because it seems to work a little bit better. I'm sure DualShock 4, there's a way to make it work as well. But you get to choose Xbox 360, hit apply. And from over here, I like to go under the touchpad setting here and switch this from mouse to pass through. What this does, I mean, you can still use your touchpad to control your mouse. So I'm not really sure what difference this actually makes. But for some reason, sometimes we have it set up as a mouse. It kind of screws up other applications if you want to use this for other emulators as well. But I'll leave that pass through. I go to other. And again, I'll go down here to the DS4 BT pull rate. This I'm going to go to max. This gives me the best response time for the controller with my Bluetooth device. Up here for the profile, I can name it whatever I want. I'll just name it Xbox 360 controller. I'll just hit save. And if you didn't see it under there, it actually mapped out all the controller buttons on here to match up with the Xbox 360 controller. So it's pretty easy to use. And now if I just choose Xbox 360 controller, I have a yellow light on, like it shows on my controller here. And now it's ready to go. If I hit stop or if I close it, it's going to disconnect the controllers. So just minimize it. Now it's out of the way. All right, so let's actually open up the Project 64 emulator so that way we can actually use our controller with the emulator itself. I'm assuming you already have the emulator downloaded if you're at this video, but if you don't, you can follow the link in the description below to actually be brought to the website so you can download this yourself. But with that, let's actually open up the emulator. I'm going to use the same game I used for my last walkthrough, so that's Pokemon Snap. I'll just open this up here so that we can see that my controller is still connected and everything. But the first thing I'd like to do is actually make it so the emulator doesn't stop playing when I'm not on it. So to do that, let's just go into options, configuration, and then under general settings here, you just uncheck this box and then hit apply. So now here, this should be running when we're not in it still. But again, I locked it up because of other things, but while we're still in here, let's actually set up the controllers that way it's ready to use because we all have to close the emulator and reopen it again for this to actually take uh, effect. So go back under options here, go back under configuration and under plugins here, under our input controller plugin, you should have this project 64 input plugin automatically chosen. For my last video, I used the Enrage for project 64, which we really don't need to use now. So I'm just going to keep it at the default of Project 64 input plugin. I'll hit apply, hit OK. Come back up here for options under input settings. Now we'll actually have to connect our controller. So for player one here, I'm just going to click this little button over here. This is controllers plugged in. Change your dead zone to wherever you want it to be. This is just how sensitive your controller actually is to the button pushes, especially your, you know, analog sticks. But if you want to set up the buttons to do an easy setup, you can just hit this little button here that says setup. So you can do that. They can go through one by one. So up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. For C buttons, I like to use my right analog stick. So up, down, left, right, B, A, start, Z trigger. I like to use my left trigger button, but again, make it yours. Cause that's again, the trigger that's on the back of the middle of the N64 controller, which doesn't really there's nothing really here for that. So I'm going to do that. For left trigger, I'm going to do the top left pad. And then right trigger, we're going to do this one. So there's that. I'm going to hit apply. Hit OK. It's still going to say no controller connected. So let's just close out of that. Open it right back up again. Now we should be able to just use our controller as if it's ready to go. So if I just hit A here, it brings me to the main screen. If I hit A again, 
It's gonna bring me here. We hit new game. And now I can name it whatever I want. So let's just name them doc here quick. Easy as that. We are now connected. We're ready to go. This thing is gonna work just like an N well, just like an N64 controller, let's just say, because I mean obviously the N64 controller was a very unique setup for a controller. But now you can play your games that you want to play. There's all kinds of different options here. Use the legal options to actually download this. But with that, that's all there is to setting up your PS4 controllers to use with your Project 64 emulator. I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, let me know in the comments below. Please leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this in the near future. If you want to watch me actually use this live, you can watch me over on Twitch. I'm usually streaming on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central Time here in the United States. But with that, enjoy the games. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know in the comments below. Message me on Twitter, anything like that. By the way, Twitter, also a link in the description below. Also, if you want to watch me take on any Pokemon challenge videos, there's other ones uploaded on the channel. So take a look at those. And there's also links for those in the description as well. But with that, guys, have a good night. And I'll catch you in the next one.